Hey guys and welcome back. If you're looking for pick content beyond just what I'm covering in this video on college basketball, you can head over to stumpthespread.com and we have daily free picks over there as well as premium content. And we don't just have college basketball picks, but also the NBA, college football, the NFL, and NHL uh, at this particular time of the year. Um, if you want, you can click that thumbs up or subscribe button. That really helps us out. And if you click the subscribe button, you'll get notifications of when I release these pick videos in the future. Uh, in this particular video, there's a lot of college basketball games on the board today. I'm going to be going over about 16 matchups that I think have some of the uh, better value bets on the board today. Um, since there's so many games that I'm going to be covering in this video, I'm not going to go quite into as much depth on the matchups as I would on maybe days that there aren't as many games to cover. So uh, just a heads up on that. But I'm going to be starting with UCLA against Kentucky here. UCLA getting a ton of points here. Uh, going into a tough road environment. UCLA played really well against Kentucky last year in an upset win for the Bruins. Uh, we do like UCLA getting the points again this year against the Wildcats, especially since this is a much better version of UCLA than what we got out of them last year. So getting the 9.5 to 10 points seems like a pretty strong value bet there. Moving on to Central Florida against UMass, this is a UCF team that we were pretty high on coming into the year. Uh, UCF has looked really strong out of the gate, and now that they're working uh, one of their best players, A.J. Davis, back into the mix, that should really give this group an extra boost, uh, especially on the offensive end. Uh, the return of their point guard, who was out all last year with an injury, uh, has been really great for this team. He's been uh, B.J. Taylor has been leading the team in scoring. And then Central Florida, their big strength right now has been on the defensive side of the ball. They rank as one of the best defenses in the nation. And we see that as being the difference maker here for UCF as they go on to win and cover the spread against UMass. Uh, next game I want to talk about is West Virginia against Virginia. Uh, West Virginia had a really tough time against Virginia last year, but this is a Cavalier squad that we don't have quite as much confidence in, even though this Virginia group is tremendously effective on the defensive side of the ball. They're not quite the same threat on the offensive end. Uh, they've lost some key offensive contributors um, over the last couple of years from their team. And uh, even though this Virginia squad, is, they don't beat themselves and they are great on the defensive side of the ball. There's no doubting that. We do like West Virginia to give them a run here and keep things competitive and getting the eight to eight and a half points feels like a pretty solid value bet here with the Mountaineers. All right, moving on, the next game I want to touch on is going to be Xavier versus Baylor. Uh, Xavier, actually both these teams have gotten up to a really strong start this year. Um, although we do think that these groups are really talented, um, we think that neither of these squads are quite good enough to be top 10 teams. This is kind of more of a result of their them playing well early on in the year, but I don't know if this will necessarily hold once these particular teams enter their conference play. That's yet to be seen. Um, you know, Xavier, for instance, they are undefeated with some pretty nice resume wins, but they did almost lose at home against a team like Lehigh, which wouldn't have been a good result, and they went to overtime against a really bad Missouri team. So I'm still a little bit hesitant on this Xavier squad, even though they have been looking much better as of late. Um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They've been putting up some pretty strong results, and this is a Xavier squad that does still have quite a bit of talent from returning from last year's tournament team. And then you have Baylor losing their top two players from last season's team, but uh, Baylor's actually done a tremendous job of proving themselves against a tough schedule early on, and that's really vaulted this group up the standings. I don't know if it's necessarily sustainable for Baylor, but um, they'll definitely have a chance to prove themselves uh, once they get into Big 12 play. But... Nothing's going to be easy for their Baylor in what has been a really strong Big 12 conference in recent years from top to bottom in that particular league. But uh, this should be a pretty competitive game. Um, Baylor has the slight edge on the defensive side of the ball coming into this one, but we feel like Xavier has a pretty significant offensive edge, especially if they're knocking down their jumpers, uh, their three-pointers. Um, we do think Xavier can keep this one competitive, getting the points as the better value bet in this one. Another interesting matchup here, we got Stanford against Kansas. Um, this Stanford group brings in a new head coach this year, and the cupboard isn't bare over there at Stanford. They do bring back quite a bit of uh, veteran pieces, so they should remain a factor in the middle of the Pac-12 this year. But uh, Stanford's been really struggling on the offensive side of the ball, and we think that's going to be a big uh, issue for them in this one. So 
with Kansas getting that home court advantage, we do like them to pull away and cover this rather large spread here as the better bet. Tulsa against Little Rock. Uh, this is a Tulsa team that opened the year extremely poorly, uh, picking up some really bad results early on, but Tulsa has picked things up going on a three-game winning streak ever since they got their leading score back in the mix. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock, people might remember them from the NCAA tournament last year. This was a team that w won over 30 games, very impressive last year, but Little Rock isn't going to be quite the same force this year, even though they are one of the favorites in the Sun Belt. Um, this is just as a Little Rock squad that's not going to put up quite the kind of results that they did a season ago. Uh, we like what we've been seeing out of Tulsa as of late, and we do like them to kind of push the Trojans here as they go on to cover this five-point spread. Rhode Island against Providence. This is a Rhode Island team that has a lot of expectations coming into the year, no doubt about that. Uh, they haven't necessarily performed the greatest in some of their toughest matchups so far this year. Uh, coming off a tough road loss against Valpo, and this is going to be another tough true road game for Rhode Island. There's a lot of pressure on this Rams uh, team to kind of pick up some resume wins in the non-conference to make things a little bit easier on them come, you know, March when uh, Selection Sunday comes around, but you know, this is going to be a really tough challenge for them, and Providence has been playing really well on their home court. Uh, this is a Providence team that's reloaded nicely, and they have very good head coaching and a strong home court advantage. We do feel like the Friars getting the points here is going to be the better value bet. Uh, Northern Iowa against Wyoming. Northern Iowa has really struggled on the offensive side of the ball this year. There's no denying that. In their last outing, they only were able to put up 50 against uh, George Mason and what was a pretty bad defeat for them. Um, going on the road here against a Wyoming team that actually has looked better than most people expected coming into the year. And Wyoming has a pretty solid home field or a home court advantage, but they're, uh, with their football team playing in the uh, Mountain West Conference title game, that might affect some of the um, atmosphere over there in Wyoming. But uh, this is a Wyoming team that's remained undefeated thus far early on at home. And even though they lost their leading score from last year's team, uh, this Cowboys group has really been spreading the ball around a bit more evenly, and they pretty much have looked like more of a threat, at least early on this year. It'll be interesting to see if that holds up for the Cowboys once they enter conference play. But we do like Wyoming getting the points here behind their home court advantage, especially given how much Northern Iowa has struggled on the offensive side of the ball as of late. Moving on to Oklahoma against Wisconsin. Oklahoma lost a lot of veteran talent from last year's tournament team. This is going to be an Oklahoma squad that probably has to battle more in the range of the bubble this year. Uh, they do return some talent and have great head coaching, which is a different ma difference maker for them. And then you have this Wisconsin team. Brings back pretty much everyone from last year's tournament team. And even though they have had some disappointing losses so far this year against Creighton and North Carolina, uh, this is a team that has a tremendous home court advantage, and we saw that uh, the other day in their convincing home win against Syracuse. We like a similar result here as Wisconsin goes on to win and cover this spread. Next game I want to talk about is going to be Oklahoma State against Maryland. We're pretty high on this Oklahoma State squad, especially on the offensive side of the ball. This Cowboys offense ranks as one of the top units in the nation right now. Um, Oklahoma State brings in a new head coach this year, and it's nice to get some new blood over there at um, Oklahoma State. It seems like it's working out at least early on. Maryland only returns one starter from last year's tournament team, and we do expect the Terps to take a rather significant step back this year, especially this will be a little bit more noticeable probably once Big Ten play rolls around. Uh, this one has gone from a pick em up to minus 2.5, surprisingly, for Maryland, especially considering the fact that Maryland looked awful in their last home game in a blowout loss against Pittsburgh, and now with Pittsburgh losing uh, yesterday against Duquesne, that's not looking like the greatest loss for Maryland. Uh, so we like Oklahoma State getting the points is a pretty solid value bet. Akron against Creighton, really um, tough test here for Akron. This is a Akron group that returns uh, some key veterans from last year's squad that had a lot of success in the MAC, and this is one of the MAC favorites again this year. Uh, Creighton brings back a ton of talent, and this team should be able to make a run to the NCAA tournament. They already got that early home win against Wisconsin, which is a really nice resume result for them. Uh, Creighton has a tremendous home court advantage, which should be a difference maker here, and Akron's defeat uh, to open the season came again on the road against a team that really likes to push the pace of play on the offensive end. Uh, but that Youngstown State squad that Akron lost to doesn't compare to this Creighton squad at all. Creighton's head and shoulders above where the Penguins are. So we do like Creighton to come through here with a rather convincing result as it gone to win and cover 
this large spread. Uh, moving on to Auburn versus UAB. Uh, Auburn's basketball program has been down for quite a number of years. Uh, Bruce Pearl's trying to turn things around there, and he is bringing in uh, probably some better recruits than Auburn typically is able to get. And then this is a UAB squad that was hoping to kind of rack up some resume results in the non-conference to build up their RPI so that they would have a shot at making the NCAA tournament as an at-large, but th three early losses is going to make that a little bit tougher for UAB, especially with their home loss coming against Furman by... Uh, 10 points, that wasn't a great result over there for the Blazers. Uh, Auburn, if they're able to get their offense rolling, this is a team that's pretty lethal with the three-point shot. Um, we do think that they can get their shot going here against UAB and getting the four points. We feel like Auburn's the better value bet in this one. Then we have Indiana State against Utah State. Utah State has a tremendous home court advantage, one of the best in the nation. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons why this one's jumped from minus three and a half to minus six and a half. Indiana State has opened the year three and four overall, but that's a little misleading. This is a Sycamore squad that was able to, you know, push a team like Iowa State and Stanford right to the end and get a game that could have gone either way in those matchups. But in this really tough road environment, we do think Utah State can build the momentum to pull away and uh, cover this moderate spread here. All right, just a hand, actually, three more games left here on my list. So Virginia Commonwealth against Illinois. Uh, this is a VCU squad that, you know, is remaining relevant, even without Shaka Smart leading the way over there. But it'll be interesting to see where this program goes in the future um, once Shaka Smart's players are completely out of the equation over there with the Rams. VCU has looked pretty strong so far this year. Um and then you have Illinois, who's tested themselves early on. Uh, get, they get this one at home with a really strong home crowd advantage, and Illinois came through for us in a big way uh, the other day with their home win against NC State going on to blow out the Wolfpack. We like this Illinois offense. Uh, when they get things rolling, they're pretty tough to stop. Illinois is a little less um, consistent. However, on the defensive side of the ball, we do like Illinois to push VCU in this one, and getting the considerable amount of points feels like the better bet here, uh, siding with Illinois. All right, Gonzaga against Arizona. Um, Arizona, they're having a really tough time just keeping enough guys, you know, healthy or eligible to play. They're down to seven scholarship guys that are going to be suiting up and playing in this one. Um, you know, having a short bench hasn't really affected Arizona all that much so far this year. They have been showing some pretty good results. Uh, Gonzaga has looked pretty impressive out of the gate, but they go into a pretty difficult environment here on the road against Arizona. Uh, as long as Arizona is able to stay out of foul trouble and not get any more injuries, they should be able to weather the storm here and at least keep things competitive against Gonzaga. So we do like the Wildcats getting the points in this one as the better bet. And the last game I want to cover isn't listed for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why it's not listed on this site, but um, it's going to be Missouri State against Air Force. Missouri State right now is about a one-and-a-half point favorite on the road. We're pretty high on this Missouri State squad. They have really good depth and great shooting from the outside. Um, they did lose one game on the road this year to DePaul. That was a game that Missouri State kind of had the um, – everything was going their way, way right until the end when they kind of fell apart, and then right at the end they lost on a buzzer beater in that one. But they were able to bounce back pretty impressively going out to blow out North Dakota State in their next outing. Uh, we do think Missouri State should be able to get things going in this one in, at Air Force. Uh, sometimes the altitude can have an issue uh, with these teams that might not be used to the altitude over there at Air Force, but Mich or, uh, Missouri State has a really deep bench, which should help them with any kind of fatigue issues they might run into. Uh, Air Force opened the year impressively, but that's a little bit of fool's gold given the very easy competition they were going against. With a tougher schedule as of late, Air Force has been um, on a losing streak as a result. We think that's going to continue here for the Falcons as they go on to lose to this one against Missouri State and fall to the spread. So those are the 16 games I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, got through them pretty quickly, so not to make this video too ridiculously long. Again, if you're looking for content beyond just what I talk about in this video, you can head on over to stumpthespread.com, and if you're on desktop, you can get there just by clicking the logo right here, and I'll also link Stump the Spread in the video description if you're on mobile or just want to get to it that way. We have free and premium pick content over there, and also Again, if you can, click that thumbs up and subscribe button. It really helps us out. 
and that's going to be pretty much it for this video. So I will see you in the next college basketball pick video, and we have uh, college football tomorrow. Uh, I made the week 14 pick video for college football, uh, made that earlier in the week. Um, next week we just have the Army-Navy game, which is always really exciting. Uh, I'll probably make a video for that, uh, just as it's going to be a pretty short one, just because it's one matchup. But uh, And then we have bowl season after that. I'm really excited to see all the matchups we get for that. It's always a really exciting time of year for college sports with uh, the bowl season going on. And then college basketball is about halfway through the non-conference. And then once we head into January, we head into conference play. And then before you know it, it's going to be March, and we're going to get March Madness, which is arguably the most exciting sporting event uh, every year in sports. So really looking forward to that. Uh, again, I'll see you guys in the next video, and hope you have a great day. Bye.